everybody, Ken here at Silver Creek Nursery. I'm just getting ready some spray for the uh, orchard and the nursery stock. Uh, no, this is not uh, chemical pesticides. Uh, this is a holistic spray that Michael Phillips recommends in his really awesome book, The Holistic Orchard. Um, he explains everything really well in the book, so I'm not going to go into great detail, but I've kind of adopted just a method of uh, doing it my way that makes sense for me. Uh, basically, it's the same recipe that he recommends in the book. Um, holistic spray, you do it three times a year. Uh, early in the spring, you do your first spray and then um, like just when the leaves are coming out and then you do a spray at this time, about a month later, and then another one maybe a month later, like at the end of June. So there's four main ingredients that go into the holistic spray. Um, the first uh, and possibly most important is the effective microbes, uh, usually abbreviated EM, and that's this jug here. The uh, effective microbes, they basically provide beneficial bacteria and, and other microbes to colonize the foliar surfaces of the plant in the ground and soil um, around the plants and basically the idea is to outcompete uh, fungi and other pathogens which um, are not so beneficial. You can buy it in a starter culture which is what I usually do and then it has to be brewed. Um, however, this culture um, is not working anymore because it's getting too old I guess. I tried to uh, brew up a batch a few days ago and it's not smelling right and it's not um, it should have like a really nice earthy smell so basically I, I put some molasses warm water in a gallon jug you put in um, like half a cup of this stuff and get it going and it's and then it multiplies the organisms so and then you put your gallon jug in the tank so when I discovered that it wasn't working I quickly ordered some already activated EM from Organic Gardener's Pantry and they shipped it to me right away so that's why I'm using the already activated EM. The next ingredient is kelp, uh, liquid kelp which I also get from Organic Gardener's Pantry and you can get their info right here um, uh, gardenerspantry.ca so really great uh, Christina is great to deal with there and um, so the kelp is basically a foliar feed. Uh, the next ingredient is neem oil. It's basically uh, works like an insecticide. Uh, it disrupts the insect's hormones, um, but it's really not like a pesticide at all. It's just the oil from neem tree fruits or nuts, I mean. Uh, and then the fourth ingredient is liquid fish, which is essentially fish processing waste, which I usually get from Organic Gardener's Pantry as well, but I found a more uh, closer source here in Ontario, so I'm going to try that out this time. But it looks and smells the same as what I got from Organic Gardener's before. It's like this brown, gunky, uh, pulverized fish guts. And so... Yeah, basically, I'll show you my recipe here even. It's um, for 50 gallons of water, which is what my sprayer is. There's the recipe. Uh, and I'm going to do two sprays today. And uh, we'll go out and have a look at the sprayer. Okay, so here's my sprayer. It's... Uh, probably the only thing I've ever bought brand new at least the only no I shouldn't say that like the only thing this expensive that I have bought brand new in my life which um, tells you how important it is to me I wanted a brand new sprayer because then I know what has been sprayed in it from day one um, and because basically everything that's sprayed in sprayers that you'd buy at auction sales or whatever are all things that I really do not want to be spraying on my plants and this sprayer has never sprayed 
even lime sulfur. I don't put lime sulfur in this sprayer because that's like a biological. Like so, every this sprayer has sprayed only biologicals such as BT and beneficial um, like garlic juice, neem oil, uh, compost tea. That's the only stuff that goes through this sprayer, and it's really really awesome sprayer. And the, the uh, tractor in front I built, um, not specifically to pull the sprayer, I use it for scuffling in between rows. Special uh, skinny but long wheelbase tractor and it works great to pull the sprayer down between the nursery rows. So it's just, uh, that's the whole uh, kit and caboodle here. I would like to maybe someday change the back part of the sprayer here. We can see where the booms are. You can put the booms in various um, various angles and you can aim the, the uh, nozzles up or down or, or turn them off if you just want the bottom ones like when the nursery stock's really small. But I would like to have spray booms that come out um, and spray down on the crop for when it's small. Basically, I do four rows at a time with it like this, and it just sort of depends on the drift. And right now, it's perfect. It's cool, it's overcast. There's just a very light breeze, which is perfect for spraying. So, yeah, I'm gonna get at it. I'm gonna mix up the spray, and we'll see you out in the field. Okay, so I'm putting straight hot water in the tank. To get it good and hot to dissolve the neem, you want to keep it warm. You got to work quite quickly once the neem's in the tank. And uh, we're going to start up the sprayer because we also want it agitating. As soon as the neem is in there, you got to have it agitating uh, or you're going to plug stuff up. And yeah, pretty much all this stuff, fish and everything, is just going to plug everything up. So. So I want to show you another aspect of the uh, holistic spraying operation for me and that's deep in the jungle here of this hoop house. I have a um, hot water heater and because you need warm water to spray your neem oil, uh, to dissolve the neem oil. Um, I have this old natural gas hot water heater back here in the hoop house, which is normally what I use. Today I'm using water from the house because this thing um, didn't want to fire up. But I just have it on a propane tank, so a natural gas hot water heater will run on propane. And I have been using it successfully up until now, and so I'm hoping to 
maybe find another secondhand one because it's probably going to be, uh, you know, beyond me to to fix it. Probably the igniter's burned out, and like no one's going to sell me an igniter without a gas fitter license. So that's how I get the hot water normally for the neem oil, and. Oh yeah, the sun came out. So normally I spray very early in the morning. Uh, you do not want to be warm and sunny when you're spraying because the neem oil will burn the leaves on your trees. They will turn totally black and fall off and freak you right out because um, that's what neem does. So I it was overcast when I started spraying and now the sun came out, but it is late in the day so I'm hoping there's only another hour or two until the sun goes down behind the trees so and and most of the nursery stock will be in the shade so I'm just kind of hoping that it'll be alright and it's not a very warm day so, uh, so take it easy with the neem spray early in the morning or in the evening uh, when it's overcast not above 25 Celsius today it's it maybe peaked at like 22 Celsius and now it's feeling more like 19 um, so I think it'll be all right, but uh, I was kind of not expecting the sun to come out so strong because it was very overcast. But anyway, that's uh, the story on the Michael Phillips Holistic Spray Mix. Hope you found that informative and helpful. If um, you're thinking of doing this in your own home orchard, you don't need necessarily an elaborate sprayer like that, but backpack sprayer works great. Uh, anything that agitates you need something that will agitate because all of this stuff it needs to be agitated as you're spraying because it's thick and gooey and yeah and usually I'm wearing a bunch of it by this time but actually today somehow I managed to stay fairly clean and not be tasting any of it or anything like that which is always good but even though it's really it I've sprayed pesticides before and I've worn the protective gear and everything and I follow the label and I do everything that they say and I still feel like I want like a headache afterwards and soreness and achiness and I said I'm not doing that even with lime sulfur which is permitted under organic um, under the organic standards you can spray lime sulfur you can buy it in the hardware store it's not included in the pesticide ban but when I spray it I feel achy in like my shoulders and collarbone and I don't want to touch the stuff I don't want to go near it so this stuff it makes me want to sing so it's totally a positive spraying experience um, and just want to share that with you so if you like this video uh, subscribe for more because I'm planning to uh, send some more videos to YouTube um, So yeah, like subscribe and see you next time